Hello. G'day guys and welcome back to the Wed Talk podcast. Uh, today we have some awesome guests lined up. We have Cass and Kane from CKCS Films. <laughs> I'm glad they got that out without stuttering. A married duo who have been in the industry for over 10 years. Started out as a team creating Tarantino-style short films and now they've made their way into the wedding industry. After starting out in Adelaide, they now make their trek down to Melbourne and started up CKCS Films. The job developer style created to fun and adventurous couples, and we can't wait to get in this one and uh, chat all about them. So let's do it. Cool. Welcome, guys. Hey. Hello. Thanks for having us. No, no worries. Thanks for to just introduce yourself to the podcast. Um, let all I guess know who's who and what you do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Cass. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, and this is Cass. I'm Cass, yeah. Um, yeah, we've been married for six years now. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we met studying film at uni, so oh, cool. it's kind of brought us to this point. But yeah, like, do you want to tell our story? Yeah, sure. What's <laughs> yeah, we met a lot. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, how we studied. Yeah, at start, uni. start from the start, and uh, yeah. we'll 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 work our way through. All right, cool. All right. cool. Yeah, so I guess we both studied um, film and television at university in South Australia. Um, and we met in a drama class actually, uh, and we're friends. We were creating all these fun short films mm. together. I was script writer. I did all the story and Kane was usually DOP, yeah. um, did all the filming. Um, yeah. And yeah, we just, um, I don't know, like we, like we eventually started dating obviously. <laughs> 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 and then uh, I think we first got into uh, weddings through Cass's cousin asked mm. us to film his wedding. I think okay. that's for a lot of people, like film their friends, close like, friends. Yeah. 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 Um, and like Cass was saying, like all our short films are always like fun and um, not sort of serious. Like yeah, funny. Yeah, we try. Yeah, we find like cinema. We we love like exciting and fun and. Mm. We're just sort of drawn to that sort of thing. Um, and so, like, yeah, all our short films are that kind of way. And I think that's how we sort of approached our first sort of wedding films too. Like, we've mm. always kind of done things a little bit... Different? Like, over the, yeah, over the top yeah. and silly. Like, um, like, a couple of moments, like, we had back in our first films, yeah. we would have, like, these, you know, over-the-top slow-mo montages of, like... You know, rooms party. yeah, look, yeah, walking towards the camera, really cool, like, uh, you know, like they were gangster. gangster that yeah, sort of, yeah. That was all inspired from, like, yeah, Tarantino and that sort of stuff. Yeah, Guy Ritchie. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and then... Yeah, so we're doing that um, from 2013 onwards, and we started picking up more people asked us to do their wedding. So we started our business, which was called um, Sterling Films back at the time. Um, and we're kind of just doing it on the side. And when we moved to Melbourne in 2017, we ended up just stopping, stopping mm. it there. New city was a bit scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So where'd you guys Big come from? Uh, yeah, from Adelaide. So like Adelaide. we, uh, yeah, it was, um, it's like, and I'm from like a small country yeah, town, it's... even, even further from Adelaide. So right. jumping from like that to Adelaide to then to Melbourne, which is yeah. like, Massive. Yeah, huge. <laughs> yeah. It was like, yeah, it was um pretty scary. So we sort of dropped it for a bit. Mm. Um, yeah. And then I got a job in like video production, like an educational in institute and sort of just like sparked my interest back up into getting into like our own sort of productions. And like, um, so it started off just me and I was doing like yeah, little corporate shoots and things like that. And I thought I'll oh, just do weddings on the side as a bit of a, you know, yeah, side hustle. Cash flow. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then sort of saw that people, like a lot of wedding films and stuff were kind of different to what they were when we started. Like we were trying to do this sort of fun stuff back then, but it was kind of a bit different. But um, mm. But like, yeah, a lot of traditional sort of wedding films back then were like... Yeah. yeah, it was just linear, um, very, yes. everything slow-mo and we had no, um, like, vows or um, sound, any, grabs. Yeah, sound grabs from the day in our old yeah. work. So Almost it wasn't... like montages that yeah. Yeah, like yeah. back then. That's that's what they like. They're just slow yeah. to a song. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's yeah. That's how we started too, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, 
And then you like as you dive into it, you're like, oh, it's actually fun telling a story. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, like I shot a couple of weddings, and then um, COVID hit. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then those weddings sort of booked us a couple when COVID sort of re like everything reopened up mm. in Melbourne. Um, and I asked Cass to come and help me on one of them, and. She just fell back in love with film, eh? Yeah, I was like very against coming back into it. I was like, nope, you can do it, it's your thing. Don't ask me to help. And then um, I was like, yeah. okay, Kane, I want to be in it. Let's yeah. do it. <laughs> Sucked in like, straight away. Sucked back yeah. in. <laughs> yeah, getting that sort of creative thing. Because I guess we had sort of fallen out of these creative industries in that sort of gap when we moved yeah. here. So yeah, it's sort of coming back to it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then from there, it's just been crazy. Mm. Like, yeah, we've just sort of really leaned into our style and, like, yeah, having fun with it and, yeah, trying to, trying to like, I don't know, yeah, tell stories in a unique, different mm. way. Like, yeah, I think that's our thing. Oh, awesome. Well, you guys oh, awesome. have definitely got uh, more experience on us and, and definitely a um, probably a little bit of a better story than we do, but uh, it's... um. <laughs> It's cool to see where people come from and obviously coming from Adelaide um, and I guess when you would have been filming back then to even then coming to Melbourne now, like the industry as a whole would have changed so much and your style, I guess, would have changed so much. Did you find that when you came, so when you did your stint in Adelaide and then you moved to Melbourne, that any of the work that you did then sort of carried over and helped you, um, I guess, start getting or start booking weddings and start getting back into it or was it a completely different shift once you moved over? Yeah, we didn't use any of our old work, did we? No, no, because it had been such a gap and, like, I, like mm -hmm. when we came back into it, we didn't want to sort of use that old sort of style because, like, while we were still trying to do things fun and different, like, because the industry at the time was that sort of music video montage sort of thing, we hadn't mm -hmm. had anything recent that we could have shown that would have sort of... Represented, yeah. Yeah, what and were you and yeah, our equipment was a lot oh, old. It's terrible. Well, yeah. What'd yeah. you start out with? Equipment wise, oh, Canon sixty D, couple of those. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I think that scarred us too, because yeah. like, like the one memory card sort of thing. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just like if if one of those goes while you're while you're, you're filming or you're, you're like you're taking it in and out, you're like, oh. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is that just with that kit lens and everything as well? Uh, I think we just had like a nifty 50 or something. Yeah, the 50 okay. was my favorite. Yeah. 50 50 yeah. and probably oh. a cute lens. Yeah. Like it's the best lens ever, the nifty 50. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we still love it now. Yeah. We're out of box. You can't beat it. So. How yeah, good. Yeah. So, how did you go then from, um, I guess, Taking the inspiration, like, sorry, where does the inspiration come from from those Tarantino and Guy Ritchie type films? Like, is that something you just like watching when you were younger growing up and then you thought, oh, it'd be cool just to recreate it? Or is there anything in particular that really drew you to that style? And then, you know, then how do you then implement that into like your own films? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's the humor in both of them. Yeah. We, yeah, we love comedy and like, we take a lot of inspiration too from like, even. TV shows like The Office and stuff. So, like, in our mm. films and mm. stuff, like, if someone says something funny, like, we'll just do those, like, simple things, like, Little punch zoom. in. Like, yeah, yeah like, <laughs> punch the in. Zooms, like, yeah. Yeah, those sorts of things. And, like, um, it's just, like, trying to find the humour in things like that as well, mm. as well as, like, balancing out with those nice moments. Because, like, weddings are obviously really yeah. emotional and loving and all that sort of thing. But we, th like... We find that 90% of the day is the couple just like having a laugh with each other yeah. and like they're so happy that all, all that sort of like formality is over and stuff mm. like that anytime that no formalities are on, they're just smiling and laughing mm. and that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like that juxtaposition between a serious emotional wedding and what they're really like, which is just joking around with each other and mm you know, making, you know, being funny, making fools of themselves. And we like kind of putting those next to each other. Yeah. Yeah. And going back to the, like the Tarantino and the, and that, like how we use that as inspiration, I think it's more like the cinematography and that sort yeah. of thing. Like we just, yeah, like compose shots. Um, like if, if we see a shot that we like, we'll take like a screenshot on our phone and be like, oh, how can we recreate this? Like, would it work in a wedding film? And, um, 
and like not everything works for every couple like mm. um like certain shots work for certain people and that's something that we do is like we have like a questionnaire that we send out to couples and ask them about their favorite films movies, and TV. movie yeah yeah and um and music as well and like we also look at a lot of music videos and 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 see what they're doing in those and like look for inspiration in that as well and yeah, yeah so like yeah I was going to say, like, how do you then? Uh, well, that was going to be my next question. How do you tie um, that particular style in? Because, like you said, obviously every couple is different, um, mm. and then trying to find that good balance between mm. keeping the serious and, um, I guess, that emotion, emotive side to the films, but then obviously bringing out like what, um, how the couple act together, and getting that um, that jovial side out of them. Like in your questionnaires, like you were saying, you got your um, what movies and stuff that they like, but do you like? Um, obviously, Cass, you're saying you've got that background of script writing and storytelling. Do you like put, um, oh, I guess, like basic sort of structures together pre-wedding for that couple just for yourself? So when it comes to shooting day, you know how to get X, Y, Z shots um, on the day? Yeah, a little bit. So yeah. like Kane said, with the movies and TV shows, we'll kind of look at what um, directors they're saying and we'll try and get shots. We'll look at their shots and we'll put together like a mood board of shots we might want to get um, yep. as well as like that helps us with the colors and then we also ask for their vows so before the wedding we get the couples to send us their vows and from that we kind of look for bits that we can direct during the day so if they say something specific and i think there was one or oh, where they're saying um the bride said that she will try and not lift heavier weights than her husband in the gym. And so we're like, okay, let's direct them to do a few like, um, yeah, gym, like gym posing like things. And just, like yeah. And so they were like completely up for all the day. It, yeah. We just directed them to do that and they yeah. were having like a real ball laughing yeah. with it. Yeah, they were just like then feed into that and just like joke like you know take it further and they just laugh more and yeah it just gets them feeling comfortable yeah yeah we spend heaps of time before a wedding getting to know each couple like we follow them on social media like on instagram and we're like chatting through messages with a mm. lot of them um uh and then like we have the questionnaire that goes out um and then we also meet, meet with them. like we try to meet with every couple now like um if they in, can meet in with person? us in person yeah, yeah yeah um and like for 90 percent of that time that we're out in person we're just like chatting, chatting yeah like just chatting about like life and what they're up to and what they're what they've been doing like um what what they've got coming up just mm -hmm. whatever um because we want them to feel really comfortable with us on the day and we found that since we've done that yeah couples are just like we get there and they just like it's like, hey, Cass and Kane. Oh, it's Cass and Kane. Like, you know, they're just we're so, friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just we're like we're part of yeah. yeah. So it's um yeah. That's been one of the things that like yeah. has really. We also ask the celebrants to send through their ceremony script too. So we read through that. And again, because usually in that they talk about their story it's... or the proposal. Um, so we kind of look through that to look for moments that we can direct or that we can look out for on the day and yeah. make sure we capture. Um, so that's something else we do. Um, yeah. Mm. And then I guess by the time we get to that edit, we feel like we know them so well that it's so easy to be like, yeah, they're going to love this. When I yeah. do this mechanical zoom on this person making a funny face, they're going to love it because I know their humour and I know what they're like. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Sounds yeah, like you guys do a real deep dive into your actual client, not just because there are a lot of vendors out there that will just be like, yep, they're booked in, see you in 12 mm. months. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it sounds like you really kind of take on that client experience side, that um, – customer support, I guess, but um, yeah. Yeah, it's, re it's really, really good to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. We've definitely found that like, since we've like, we keep adding more things that we can do to make them feel like more comfortable on the day and mm. things like that. And yeah, we're always trying to get better at that because in the end it's just benefits the film. Yeah, like, exactly. It's just yeah. makes mm. the film so much better because yeah. so the more normal they can be on the day, like, more themselves they can be the more you can show yeah, yeah the more you can show that in film yeah it makes it makes so much sense like um even going out 
because that's we we try to like zoom meetings with couples beforehand just because obviously sometimes it's hard to get like for people to yeah. get around um but i do really like that idea of actually going to meet them in person because you can get to know someone over a zoom but seeing someone i guess in the physical and mm -hmm. then they're going to re um, recognize you on the day like sometimes we will have zoom meetings with couples three four weeks before their wedding and we rock up on mm -hmm. the day and people look completely different on zoom than sometimes yeah. they do in person especially when they got makeup and suits and everything on and sometimes you rock up and you're like which which one's the bride yeah. which one's the girl yeah. they're, all, they're all they're all blonde they've all got fresh haircuts all the boys they all look very similar so no that's mm. um that's awesome do you do you think that it helps you then um like catch more uh, sorry create more like originality just having that that one meeting with them um in person to then yeah. like on the day just makes everything so much easier for you yeah, because yeah. I think you can see, you know, their quirks, how they act with one another. Yeah. And then you can kind of use that on the day as well, which again helps us because we do a lot of like candid natural grabs from the day to help tell their story. Mm. Um, yeah, cause the moments outside of like the vows and the, the, the formalities speeches, is yeah. kind of where you see that like that's who they are normally. Like yeah. nothing's written there, nothing's scripted there. That's them being them at their true self. So... Mm. Like, if couples have a lot of banter with each other, like, that's their thing. And, like, you know, if they call each other, a, like, a dickhead or something like that, like, that's something that they do, like, and we don't, we don't want to filter that. Like, we want them to be authentically them yeah. and we want to show that. And, I, yeah, I think that's really helped us and helped us with, like, all the couples that have booked us it is, like, that's sort of the biggest thing that they've said to us is, like, we feel like we know, like from watching the films that you yeah. guys do. Yeah. We feel like we know who that couple, couple is, is, like, and what they're like. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so obviously, um, you guys have been married for a little while now. How have you found the process of, um, like, I'm not sure. Did you have a videographer for your wedding, or did you just have photography? Um, how have you yeah. noticed the whole, uh, I guess, journey around, like? booking a photographer and then the lead up to the day and then post when it was your turn to do it as opposed to to now like I can imagine now it's a lot more about the service that you provide in terms of like for the whole experience not just like rocking up on the day shooting and then going home yeah yeah, yeah. we had a photographer and videographer for ours I'm just kind of family friend no no photographer was like yeah a family friend um but she was like a wedding photographer. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the customer process was so different, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think it was booked in and then, yeah, showed yeah, up yeah. at the wedding and that yeah, was send yeah. them the back time. then. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah, we had video too, but yeah, again, it was just that sort of music montage yeah. thing, mm. um, which like we loved at the time. Like, yeah. It was really good. But And we've got all the raw um, footage too, actually, because he – kind of knew Kane and he knew yeah. we were wedding videographers. So he yeah, provided okay. the war to us. So one day when we get time, yeah, he was we like, can edit re something. Yeah. You, yeah, just re-edit it whenever you want it. I was like, okay. Yeah, I, I was the same. I got all my raw footage for mine. I haven't touched it yet. But, nah. Because I like the one that I got. But yeah, it's always there if I ever want to go back to it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe maybe when I've got a holiday one day. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, i got to sit down and edit a whole wedding film again. <laughs> you get, yeah, yeah, yeah. You get much out of it. So, do you hey, at least I... oh so don't no, no, go go no, i was gonna say at least i know our quirks like you know. yeah that's <laughs> that's true you can make it 100 percent authentic to yourselves yeah so do you think now that um and jordy and i've had this discussion a couple of times but do you think now that the the service the customer service that you give is almost more important than the actual finished product that you deliver oh mm. Good question. That's a good question. I don't know. I still think the end product. But I don't think you get the no. end products without the yeah. customer service. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like, I think our work before, like, I'm still proud of what we used to do before we were doing this level of customer service, but I just think it's taken it to that next sort of mm. level, I mm. guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we'd still do, like, really good. It's just... We wouldn't know the couple as well and yeah. get those quirks that we And I think out. for us, like, yeah, the customer experience is really important because I always think, yeah, 
I was really excited when I booked everything for my wedding and I want people to know that when they book with us that we're really excited mm. with them and um, we can't wait for their wedding day and I want them to feel really special. Yeah. I think that's what you can give with your probably photos and film is you can highlight who someone is and make them feel, yeah, like, like really special, yeah, and you yeah. don't really get that ever in your life, so, yeah. unless you're a celebrity, so... <laughs> Yeah, I think that's what we like yeah. to do with our couples. Yeah, and we genuinely, like, really bloody love what we do. Like, it's so much fun. Like, I always, like we always say it to couples, but, like, this is, like, the one of the best days of your life. Like, a wed wedding is one of the best days of your life. Like, we get to live that with you, mm. with a couple every week, and, like, it's just so much fun. Like, everyone's mm. always in a good mood. Like... It can be high stress, but we kind of like that stress too. Like we, yeah. we throw on that sort of thing. Yeah. But um, it's good, yeah, like it's, it's always, yeah, it's always a good time. Like, and yeah, what what other job do you get to like finish the day on the dance floor? You get to like you know hang out with cool people. Out, yeah, yeah, like meet heaps of people. Like vent all the vendors that you get to meet. Mm. It's always yeah, it's always so much fun. Yeah, mm. I guess that um that customer part about it like. Um, as you were saying, trying to make everyone feel special, like they don't spend the same amount of time with any other vendor like they do yeah. with us mm -hmm. on a day. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, I've I've mentioned to, um, with Jordy and other people that if you if you don't get the chance say, to to have too many meetings or too many back and forths with someone on the day, you've basically got to become like best friends with someone in the matter of. Mm -hmm. A half an hour at a preparation and then you've got eight yeah. hours of a day to basically make people completely comfortable in front of a camera um mm -hmm. and to have you in their presence all day so it's um yeah it's definitely a an important um an important thing to make sure you put the time mm -hmm. in with your couples and make them feel comfortable yeah. make them feel special so that you know they're i feel like they've got to justify the price that you charge it's not just justified in your work it's justified like mm -hmm. in the people that you are um, yeah. and yeah it's just a it's just an ever ever evolving beast, the wedding industry. There's something always added added in all the time. Yeah. So yeah. how do you how do you find like um obviously so you've got your specific style. I think now with social media becoming so much more to the forefront, like how do you keep your style but keep up with the trends of the way that the industry is like forever changing? Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think like like we like with the music videos and stuff like that, we use that for inspo and stuff. But and then going back to social media, you kind of got to watch out for like what other people are doing. But I don't mm -hmm. know. I think, what do you reckon? Yeah, well, I guess we try the trends that fit our style um, specifically and that will kind of enhance our work. And we try not to use the same thing for every every couple because every couple's different. Um, hmm. so we look at kind of, you know, the couple and we think what their vibe is, what movies they like, all of that. And then we think, okay, we might try this with them because we think that would really suit them. Hmm. Um, like for example, the, uh, the, what's that drink? Fire, one? The fireball, fire the fireball can't come oh, one. That was yeah. so cool. Like, yeah. <laughs> that was, that was such an epic shot. I'd never seen anything like it before. That was insane. Yeah. yeah, that was actually um, our bride's idea. She was yeah. like, I want to do a fireball can. And we're like, what is that? And she kind of explained what she wanted. And we're like, okay, we'll do it. 100%. Yeah, so... like, this fits our style. Like, yeah. So... <laughs> Why not? And yeah, we, we had a friend in Tassie say that who's like, his sort of work is completely different to ours, I would think. Like, um, But he, he had a... Uh, Couple, couple ask him if he could do it too so, from, from the viral yeah, video it, yeah. and it was our right. video. <laughs> so so for people that haven't seen it explain explain to them what the fireball um cam is and then obviously what yeah. the shot in, in entailed yeah so it was a liter bottle was yeah it? It a was... liter bottle of fireball which we bought with us yeah came rigged the gopro, gopro up to it yeah um we had so it was the, strapped yeah. on it i don't have a bottle on it yeah. um so it's sort of like strapped on it and like, so when you would take a drink, the, like the camera would face you. So you'd see like the bottle and what they're drinking. Yeah. Um, and so we, yeah, we strapped it up and we gave it to the bride at the start of a song. Like they had a band playing and it was literally the start, like in between a song, we gave it to her. 
by the end of that three minute song, that one liter bottle was gone. gone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, that's so good. That's, yeah. that's when we get, that's when we go home. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Oh, is it done? <laughs> I'm like I'm not encouraging this. <laughs> yeah. No, it's yeah, oh. it's it's like creative things like that, and you probably think at the time, uh, obviously it's a bright idea, but you're like, oh, that's cool and unique to them. But then how, like you say, how viral that can go mm. in just like the flick of your fingers. Like it's just it's cool. I think that's the good part about socials now is like keeping up with trends. Like there's so many things coming out there. Mm. Um, you got access to so much stuff that you can adapt stuff to your style quite quickly yeah. if you need to, but you're not going to then stray too far from like what you actually want to deliver. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. We definitely, um, when we saw that one, that was one that we were like, Oh, we like, could we use it in like the, the creative highlight reel? Yeah. Um, and thought, yeah, like this would look cool. Like it yeah. would make a cool little moment in like in the party section or yeah, something. Yeah, which like we that. did use. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they like, and does it fit the vibe of the couple too? Like, which it did. Yeah, they, they were raging. They love party. Yeah. <laughs> so do you find that all of your, um, you've now created like a niche market for yourself in, in a sense with the style that you, you provide, like there's a lot of people out there probably similar to like Jordi and I's style where it's a little bit more like slower cinematic storytelling thing. And obviously yours is, is still along the same basis, but it's, you know, it's, it's a lot more fast paced. It's a lot more fun. It's a lot more adventurous. Do you find that you've now kind of created your own avenue that you can go down and then just, just grow and, and go nuts with? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Cause yeah, all of the couples that come to us, they all say the same thing. They all say, oh, we really love your work. It looks they so say, fun. Yeah, yeah, it looks so fun. We're like a party fun couple. We just want a party fun edit. Yeah, um, yeah that seems to be who we're getting now, which which is what we like doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it goes back to like, that's what we were doing back in uni. And yeah. Like, we, yeah, we we just love that sort of thing. Like we, we find that, yeah, we love over the top cinema and over the top. Sort yeah. of TV and that sort of thing, and it's just always sort of inspired us and um, been the stuff that we enjoy the most. So to be able to like put that sort of spin in like a wedding and like show a couple's story and show their like yeah that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think like we've really sort of lent into that, and yeah, the couples are just coming to us for it. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Well, so we're going a bit deeper into your style and what you supply, like. How long are your films going for? Is there kind of a sweet spot, and um, you know what what does a what does a client get when they come to you? Um, like, what can they expect when they come to to work with you guys? Yeah, so I guess the longest one we've done was the one we just released, which was twelve minutes. Mm -hmm. um, normally, we'd probably say that's too long, but yeah. this couple had an amazing story, an amazing wedding, so yeah. it was hard to jam pack everything in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, they they had like they they had a lot of people mention like you know certain things about their story, so it was kind of hard to not put it in. Like they, this couple were really into like film and TV as well, um, and like one of their favorite shows is Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And so the groom had um, done this proposal. I don't know if you've seen it, but there's like a proposal in um, Always film. Sunny, and he had like re he'd recreated it mm. and yeah so and filmed it and filmed it and it was like shot for shot match to what was in the show <laughs> and so it's like oh we can't not put that in um and then they had both met like they met being a band. a band and so like instead of a first dance they did a first song which is a song that he had written for her and That's um cool. so it was all these sorts of like things that just fit with that but yeah most of them are like that, six to eight minutes. Yeah, yeah, I'd say that for us, we have troubles. Like anything below five minutes for us is yeah. really hard. Yeah. Because then we feel like so we're cutting so a lot out. Cutting so yeah. much out. Yeah. 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 And like, yeah, because we like putting those like little grabs in like throughout the day, you know, like where they're joking with each other or there's like these silly moments and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It's, it's so hard to fit them in with the story because these sort of moments enhance the story you know um so yeah that sort of six to eight minutes seems mm. to be a good sweet spot yeah um but yeah what else do they get with us they get um we always release a reel as well TikTok like instagram reel, yeah. reel tiktok yeah. for every couple 
um, which was like a moment of their day, and that's a few day, few days after their wedding. So they get something immediately that they can share. Mm. Um, and then we also do a trailer, which is 45 to 60 seconds long, and that's released a week after their wedding. Um, again, oh, wow. just so they have something they can share immediately um, because then we do, you know, all the other edits. We do oh, it formal nice. edits. Um, depending on the package, you know, they might just get the ceremonial speeches or they might get ceremony speeches and formal dances. Oh, um, and then our top package, we also have a documentary um, edit, which is, you know, an hour plus yeah, everything. Like chronological. From, yeah, yeah, chronological. It's kind of like your, your raw sort of. Yeah. Oh, everything kind of compiled together in like yeah, the yeah, longest like, format that you can get. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. So we just chop out all the moments Fair where stuff, I'm yeah. from one <laughs> position to another. <laughs> Funny, the, um, the camera's pointing at the floor. <laughs> funny, <laughs> funny side note with that. I had a bride once message me and she asked if they could have the whole film. And I messaged her back. I was like, what What do you mean by the whole film? She's like, oh, um, just the like from start to finish. And she thought that uh, the recording of the day was like a one eight hour recording oh that God. just got cut down. So I had to tell her, I was like, so sorry, we like we stop and start the film. It's not one continuous. She's like, oh, okay, no worries. I was like, Imagine filming for eight hours. Like, imagine oh, the file yeah. size and everything that you'd go oh. through. Like, oh. Here's a 10 terabyte hard drive. Yeah, yeah, exactly <laughs> right. You just take the camera. Yeah, yeah. So, so in oh. so that, like, when it comes to shooting on the day, do you, because there's two of you, I'm assuming, it, at every wedding, do you have specific roles in what you, like, can you capture X, Y, Z? Cass, you go after this and then you kind of come together for certain spots or is it just... No, we oh. no because we stay. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, kind of. <laughs> so we stay together for majority of the day, and we yeah. both just have um, obviously different focal lengths. Yeah. Um, and then the only time we split up is family photos. One of us will capture family photos. The other and one, canapes. Will, yeah, yeah, and the, uh, no, the other one will go capture canapes and set yeah. up. And yeah. the rest yeah. of the time, we're together the whole time. Yeah. Um, so generally, yeah, I'll go up and uh, around and set up like all the audio and like all yeah. the other cameras and cameras. Yeah, Kane does all all the tech stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's George's role. Yeah, yeah, that's my role. <laughs> yeah, so I, I'll, I'll go and like set all that up and Castle will... get like, establishing shots, yeah, anything, um, details. Yeah, yeah. those are always um, the hardest ones to get. It's like, when do you get the drone out? When do you get the? I'm, when do you? Yeah, yeah. When do you? Cause, because everything's so fast paced on a day. Yeah. It's like, and if you're dealing with inclement weather and you're like, oh, I've really got to get it out now because I know it's going to rain in 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, oh, so we're going to do this. But then like, the bride's getting in a dress and you're like, oh, yeah. I can't do it. Yeah. When there's two of us, it's fine. But it's like when there's one of us here dealing, there's just mm. constant pressure the whole day. So I'm not sure if you've yeah. been shot by yourselves. But um, yeah, that's always the hardest. Hardest thing is timing everything. Yeah. Like, yeah. Once the ceremony's over, it's like, okay, I need these shots. But I also need to get these shots. I need to be here at this time. I've got like yeah. five minutes. Yeah. And I have to set up like yeah. three three or four sources of audio and, and yeah. like set up a light for the for the speeches and the dance. Oh. And... So what's yeah. what's your general go to set up for speeches and ceremony and stuff? Because we've tweaked ours I reckon the last six months all we've done is just tweak and tweak and tweak and tweak to try and make it better so that, you know, you've got a backup on your backup on your backup. Um mm. but what's your go to um i guess like audio wise and then like camera setup when you're filming like those those formal formal parts mm. of the day yeah um we used to do so like for ceremony we used to do like four cameras but we just found it was kind of yeah. overkill we didn't um, use the fourth no not ever. hardly ever yeah um it's so we've dropped up, back that up. back to yeah we've dropped that back to three so um for that one of us will be like on a gimbal or handheld or um sort of floating around mm -hmm. um the other will be at the front on like a monopod like you know pointed at the groom, pointed at the groom. so he can get his reaction um and then the third will be either depending on the space it'll be on the opposite side pointing at the bride and the celebrant yeah um or at the back so and we kind of float around with that three um mm -hmm. And then uh, for audio, like we'll mic up, we always mic up the groom. Um, 99 times mm -hmm. out of 100, we'll mic, mic up the bride, um, which is handy to have Cass because it makes that a lot makes more Makes it a lot easier. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, we originally, we started doing that and we're, we're thinking about getting back into it, but it's such a hard process to get the mic in the dress. Like we don't yeah. even do it. Um, like it's just kind of what do you use for stuff? that? Do you have like, we used to use a thigh strap. Is there, is there a better way that you can do it or that's no, it? No, that's nah. how we do it. We've looked into like, into it a lot yeah. um, and that's the best way. That's the best way we've found. Yeah. And it always captures the best audio mm. for, for the bride. Um, mm. Like if, if the wedding's inside and we don't really want to bother yeah. them, like we won't, we'll just sort of, the, the groom's mic'd up as well. The celebrant's the celebrant. mic'd up. We mic up their PA, or yep. like you know, like a zoom into the PA, yeah, and then yeah. we also have like a little Sony recorder that we attach to the handheld as well. Yeah. So yeah. like we have so many sources. Yeah, five sources of audio going at once. Yeah. This is like backup for everything. Yeah. Well, yeah, we had one wedding yeah. that we were just editing, and the PA that they were using was crackling the whole time. Mm. It was probably the windiest day I've ever. Yeah, it was so, so windy. Bad. Um. So. Uh, like, yeah, we, we like the hand, the one attached to the mic had like wind noise every mm. now and then. So like the lapels was the best. It was the source. only thing we could use. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then cause it was so windy, we couldn't have, we wouldn't have been able to really pick up the bride's audio from the groom or the celebrant. So, so we're so glad yeah. she was mic'd up. It's, yeah. it's, it's um, crazy how sometimes they just, like we had one wedding, um, at a, at a, like a big venue using their PA and it was recording and then it just like cut out for like 30 seconds mm -hmm. and then it just cut back in and then it would cut back out and cut back in. And like, it, we didn't touch it the whole time. It was plugged in and gone and done. So mm. we had to stitch together. Um, like, uh, so I think we had two cameras rolling then. Um, so we mm. had to stitch together like parts from Geordie's camera and part from me, cause he'll normally man the cameras and I'll float. Um, and yeah. just get different angles of the speeches. Um, so yeah. we had to like piece together all this stuff, all these bits and pieces and try and match audio levels. And from then on, we're just like as many audio yeah, places, as many audio things as we can. Um, yeah. yeah. Cause you don't, you don't want to lose anything, but second, what do you do for speeches? Like shit. We find speech is the hardest thing to more like get audio because it's, everyone wants to use the mic and yeah. like worst case, we're strapping a mic to the mic. Cause like, yeah. During speeches, That's, you can't just go up with a lapel and go for every person. Oh, yeah. you're up, you're up, you're up, you're up. Like it's too yeah. hard. So what do you guys do in that instance? Yeah, we're in like a Zoom for, uh, plugged into the um, like the board, mm. um, and then yeah, like a Sony thing strapped to Which it. Which is generally our best sound. Oh, well, lately mm. the, uh, the Zoom's been a lot better, okay. but um, that's because we've got the new Zoom. So mm. like we got is that the, the little Zoom, one, the F three. Mm. Yeah, the oh, like, yeah. new bit. Like the floating, it's got, the yeah, float. it's got like two two input, uh, two inputs, yeah, yeah. Um, so you get a then, you get a Sony mic strapped to the mic. Is that what you're saying as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. The mic sleeve, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We we make sure that we, like we use a sleeve because so many like DJs and MCs and that like if you come up to them they're like you better not have tape. I'm like I don't. Yeah, know, yeah. I don't. <laughs> it's yeah, like an elastic. Cool. That's what we got yeah. to look into. We use an elastic band and just wrap it around. Like when we've had to do it, we just got the little wireless go yeah. mics. Oh, um, yeah. Um, and we just pop those on. But yeah, a proper sleeve with a recorder that sits in it, it's probably a good idea. Yeah. Mm. We used to use the Rode wireless, but we've had like three or four DJs say to us, you better not be using that because it interferes with us. Yeah. I had one yeah. at the last wedding that we did. Um, yeah. DJ so, yeah, that's why we got this. Yeah, that's why we got the Sony thing. It's only like a yeah. couple hundred bucks, and it's actually really good. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah, heard yeah. bad things like from celebrants and stuff. That's why we never go. We never use those Rode wireless within a PA, within a speaker, mm. within anything, because it always interferes with their microphone transmission. I think they run on a very similar radio frequency. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So we're always just um, locally recording to a device. Mm. through yeah. DJ decks or Celebrant PA or whatever. We'll never chuck yeah. the wireless go in. We see other guys do it and they're like, yeah, yeah. it's the best, it's best to do it. It's automatically synced. It's like, what happens if they halfway during the ceremony, everything cuts out because you want yeah. to put your wireless you know, yeah. recording device yeah. into their speaker and it's like, it's all your fault. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. And uh, yeah, you'll hear about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah. We, just stay, we just stay away from that. But yeah, the mic sleeve sounds... But we'll have to look into that mm. for sure. Yeah, just got to see. Yeah, yeah. see, best friend. <laughs> so for um for the uh all the other creators out there, what's your current run and gun set up on a day? The cameras, and obviously we yeah. just discussed the audio. But what do you, what do you run for cameras wise? 
Yeah, we're on two A7S3s mm -hmm. for like what we're on all day. Yeah. Um, and like with a 28 to 75. Is that the time? Um, 2.8. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably, hopefully going to upgrade that one. Um, and then that we're just on like a 35 1.8 because uh, okay. it doesn't focus breathe like the 1.4. Yeah, it's a good middle yeah. ground too. You're like, you're not too, you're not too, um, not too wide and you're not too macro. Mm -hmm. So you're like, you're right yeah. in the middle there. Yeah, we used to use like, yeah, like use the 50, but we just found like the 35 is just such a nice, mm. yeah, it's just a nice sort of look. It's yeah. a good focal length. It's, it's not too mm. wide, but it's not too um, zoomed in either. You can kind of, it's a lot more versatile. I think with mm. the 50, like you you kind of got to back up and forth back maybe up. a little <laughs> bit more. And I know, I know what you're saying with like the uh, 1.4 to the 1.8 and the hunting, like I just use a 24 to 70 2.8 now. That's just my go-to. And I used to just yeah. use the nifty 50 all the time. And I never realized until I switched how much the nifty 50 at the 1.8 just hunts like constantly. Mm. I don't know whether it's a Canon thing because it's always, I don't know, no. trying to focus on stuff, but it's just yeah. like a pain back and forth, back and forth nonstop. Yeah. So it is a yeah. portrait lens at the end of the day. So it's always hunting for like something. Yeah. Yeah within a certain range like it's for that specific purpose whereas like you're using it for wide shots it's going to be just hunting you on what are you doing like what are you yeah, what, yeah what's going on <laughs> yeah so. um yeah so there are two main ones and then we have like an a7 four um just for like the ceremony third cam um and we used to do three cameras for speeches but Two now. Yeah, it's generally just two now. Like yeah. um, one on the speaker, and then one of us roaming around getting guest reactions and yeah, uh, bride and groom, bride and groom or couples reaction. Um, and that's usually on, depending on the on the like space, it's either on like a yeah a fifty or a tw uh, seventy to two hundred mm -hmm. or or a super wide, like depending on how cramped the space is. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so talking about cramped spaces, how do you go with those sort of spaces? Like we shot. In one a couple of weeks ago, it was a chapel, and literally mm -hmm. you could only go down the middle of the aisle. That was it. Yeah. So how do you guys go with that? Yeah, we like we'll always we always reach out to the photographer and like the celebrant beforehand just to like sort of explain like how we work on the day, and then even like on the day we just work with them wherever they want to go. We just make sure that we're out of their way mm. because there is three cameras. Like we can. Yeah. Cuts at different angles, like and if they get in the way. The one of us is on a monopod, so normally we can slide right to the side. Yeah, yeah. Oh, get in the tight um, spots. Yeah, yeah, and just yeah. be there. And then one of us roams, and then if it's a cramped space, we'll have the tripod with the third camera set up at the back, really high, just capturing that safety yeah. light. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's so like like just dependent on where yeah. you are and mm. stuff and yeah have you ever like, had to rely just on like one or two cameras because there just was not enough space or is it always three uh i don't think we've had to do not for a while we've mm. yeah not since we've had three cameras we've mm. used just two i don't think yeah i don't think so yeah even, so we're yeah. shot in some tight spaces where we could only get one camera like honestly like we were just oh, well. on the wrong side mm. and it was just reliant on us go, obviously going up and down the aisle and that and then mm. we came out of that and we're like I wonder if we could have just got some GoPros and like just strip, like just just yeah. secured yeah, just them to the wall, yeah, like it, just to get a different angle because like we couldn't get anything because like most chapels just got the middle aisle and then all the yeah. chairs are like bang secured to the outside walls. Yeah, so you can't get down either side. Um, no, so yeah, and then you have the like tricky. And it, yeah, and then they try and pack in like 150 people. Yeah, yeah, yeah and everyone's standing at the like back side of like, <laughs> and, and you're like, uh, can you get your camera out the way <laughs> yeah yeah it's oh it's it's a hard it's a hard thing but yeah. mo i think a lot more venues and stuff with it like a lot more people straying away from those like chapel um like i know for us i think our one of our first few weddings was a chapel and then 60 weddings later we're back in one so the gap between mm -hmm. so yeah. it's, it's not yeah. always an issue but some, when it arises it's like well you want to deliver the best for the couple yeah. um, but you've also got to work with what You've, you've got, got at the same yeah, time. Yeah, what you can do. Yeah. yeah. Mm. All right. So we've got a new little segment that we're testing here. Uh, we haven't done it before, so it might might go well and it might flop, but we'll this see how segment, it is. So this is mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if, it, if it's good, it's all me. If it's bad, it's also all me. So it's called I Do or I Don't. 
So it's basically like you do agree with it or you don't agree with it. Um, we're going to have to come up with a sting for this, Geordie. So if we'll, uh, we'll add that add that <laughs> yeah. to the list of things to do. Um, but the first question for the I do or I don't is using AI to make your couple's journey and your daily tasks easier. So we kind of like we don't use any at the moment. Like we have a CRM, obviously, um, yeah. which helps. But like in terms of AI, like mm. we only use like the you know, Adobe podcast okay. sort of thing just to like help any um, vocals that we might need to like clean up slightly. Um, but in terms of like, would we use it? Like, I think we'd probably use it for formal edits. Mm. Yeah. But we probably obviously watch the formal edits back, make sure it was all good. But the creative edits. Like all the B roll, I couldn't cull the B roll with AI. With an AI because, tool, yeah. Yeah, that's like we we use too half, many. Yeah, half the time the sound grabs are, you know, not the the nicest shots, mm. you know, in, <laughs> that we've got. So yeah, it's not accurate just them. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it'll get better like, over time. But yeah. got really yellow in here, didn't it? The sun's coming out now. Yeah, that'll the white be, it's, got, it's got to be green. <laughs> um, would you or would you not or, uh, outsource your editing? Again, probably yeah. for the, probably for formal only edits. for formal edits. Yeah, yeah, just just to sort of take that pressure off, and so that we could then concentrate more on like the 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 customer highlight, experience. the creative one. Yeah, and mm. the customer. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's so many good editors out there now. Like, there's so many editors that are so much better than, you know, we are. And um, even most of the people that we follow, like, you think they do the editing, and some still do, but they might do, like, just their own little tidbits here and there. And then, like, 90% mm -hmm. of their work is now because they have dedicated people who can do it 10 times as good as them, saves them yeah. time, and allows them their business to flourish because now they've got more time to focus on the things that matter. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. I guess it comes out of your workload as well. Like if you can yeah. manage mm. continually shooting then um, and editing, then like, you know, obviously go for it. But sometimes like you get that big that you just can't, you don't have yeah. enough time to do everything. Um, so, yeah. And the, the next one is um, being fed last at weddings. Feed us first. No. Yes. <laughs> feed um, no, like we kind of snack a bit through the day. Yeah, and we're both vegans, so to be honest, if we get a meal, we're pretty happy. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say we work yeah. with we work with the guy that's vegan, and he, it's somehow he's the only one that ever like his meal is always wrong. Yeah, <laughs> it's, like, it's like we either forget to tell the, the venue that or the yeah. couple that oh he's vegan. I did um, that the yeah. other day because he we had him on to just shoot with us for a couple of hours, and then he ended up doing the whole day, so it completely eluded me to like organize a meal for him um yeah. normally we always do and like oh i said to the lady coming out i was like oh sorry he's vegan um i have had to add it on is there anything you can do and they just brought him out like a bowl of lettuce and spinach yeah. and i was like oh, that yeah. was so bad for him yeah nah like i think that a lot have been heaps better lately haven't they like yeah. um a lot of the venues that we've been to like we've got some pretty good food now mm. yeah yeah, yeah. Michael yeah. Briggs, the photographer, he created a reel, I think it was yesterday, about it all. It was hilarious. Like, he goes through, <laughs> and he's like, he, he'll, he'll get fed, and then all of a sudden, like, speeches are coming yeah, on. So yeah, so he's, he's waited, like, 45 an hour, like, oh, an hour for his meal, and, he sits <laughs> around, and then, like, all his speeches get called up, so then he jumps across the table, he's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, hilarious. yeah. So go check it out he's if you like haven't seen it. Yeah. So, you're at, yeah. Like, a play gets put down, and like, ah. Yeah. Uh, they're ready to go with the next like, round of speeches. Oh, yeah, and you're you like trying a, to get audio like and stuff. Full like... of food, and you're like, oh. yeah. <laughs> uh, and the last so one cocktail is cocktail is always good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you do you ever think that wedding films will take over photos in terms of priority on a day? Mm. I think they're starting to. Like we yeah. had our last three couples booked us before they booked their photographer. Mm. There you go. Um, yeah, they um, and then asked us who who we like thought for photography. Yeah, which was like, wow, this is different. This is nice. <laughs> Started to switch. Yeah, so yeah, I think like, yeah, I feel like we're starting to see it. But even going back, yeah, when we first started ten years ago, like 
barely anyone got videography. Video, yeah. Mm. But now it was a it's luxury, crazy. Wasn't it? Yeah, like basically almost everyone gets it yeah. now. So Video's I feel like king in this yeah. day and age. Yes. Yeah. Oh, there's always going to be a place for photography. It's just oh, 100%. It's just the pe- it's just the pecking order that things are coming yeah. in now. Yeah, and I, I reckon eventually it literally could go like you're seeing content creation come out now. Mm. Like that's just started. Mm-hmm. In five, ten years, honestly, that could be nearly a higher priority than just getting a full video made. Like you just never know where yeah. the industry is going to go. Yeah, hundred yes. percent. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Like we like the content stuff is really cool, but like. And it's good to have because you can have it immediately and stuff, but mm. people will always want that polished, like, mm. they, everyone will always want to feel like they've been in a movie or, yeah. you know, yeah. been papped, <laughs> properly papped. <Yeah. laughs> people are still gonna... printing their photos and all sorts of stuff, so there's always, it's yeah. always going to be there. It's just what, mm. what do they prioritise first? Do you reckon yeah. films, films will become, like, obviously you said how much they've changed in the last like even say from COVID to now, like they've gone, I still even think pri- uh, previous to COVID, they were still a little bit more like montage and they still had that kind of vibe and everyone sort of shot the same. Do you reckon mm-hmm. it'll go to the point where there'll be like pre-wedding shoots and I know some people down do post-wedding shoots as well. Like mm-hmm. it'll become a, a thing where it's almost like a, a mini docker of a build-up to a wedding as opposed to just like a sh- like shooting on the day. Yeah, yeah, and we actually do offer that. Um, yeah pre or post wedding shoots and we we would love to do more of them because then you can tell their whole story yeah which is yeah something that we like with with our films that's what we're trying to do is not just tell the story of the wedding but Mm. like the journey of how they got there yeah Yeah. who they are like their character like this is a movie and they're like they're the main characters and like people go through things to get to that point and like that's yeah, we we want to show you more of that. Yeah, because yeah, at the end of the day, like they say, well, storytelling is, you know, there's always a conflict somewhere and then it's overcoming mm-hmm. the conflict to create it. Obviously, on a wedding day, there is no, well, you'd hope yeah. that there's no conflict. So, <laughs> um, fingers crossed. But it's like, how do you make it a, a story, mm-hmm. but then also, like, if it's only shot on that one day? Like, I know there's a lot of the um, videographers in the States, like, they'll, yeah. they'll go into their house, like, you know, mm weeks mm. beforehand and they go on trips with them and they just film the yeah. whole lot and i feel like that's very niche to the states i don't know if yeah. like <laughs> us as a country as people are as invested in that sense as maybe yeah. like, it might, you might have a small like minority that's gold probably Co- down like, for that up in the gold coast they'll do it that's about the only place i could yeah. see it happening but yeah. it's just like it's the way that it just it's going like i, I don't know like yes yeah, yeah. i made the switch full time to video like it's changed so much in 12 months let alone how it's going to go mm. in the next 5 years I think the yeah. barrier to entry is a lot easier now. Whereas you look yeah. like five, ten years ago, you if you wanted wedding videography, it was like you had a film crew of five, they all had stationary tripods, like it loses you like a broadcast. Like I talked to some of my um older mates who had their weddings like ten years ago and they they were paying fifteen, twenty grand. It was like channel nine rocking up to their bloody right. wedding. <laughs> Oh yeah, with all these cameras, like mic mics going everywhere. You know, you get you get a three hour edit. It's like nuts. <laughs> and now it's come so far from that, whereas, you know, really, as long as you get the audio equipment and a camera, like you can go shoot a wedding. Yeah, mm. 100%. Yeah. It comes yeah. into your um, story however ability. you want to edit. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I think it's also going back a little bit that way too in terms of mm. like people are wanting those longer edits. Like five or like, yeah, four or five years ago before COVID, it was like, mm. because it, I guess like social media at that time, like Instagram was like, you can only post a one minute video. So mm. like everyone wanted that one minute sort yeah. of thing. Sure, yeah. Now yeah. everyone sort of does that as a trailer, like we do. And then like, they want that longer. Yeah, lots like, of our couples want the doco edit now so they don't miss anything. They have mm. everything, yeah. they don't know, parents or grandparents and yeah. yeah. But even the highlight thing too is like, people want that longer as mm. well, I reckon. Like, Nostalgia's yeah. coming back, like everything from the day and you see it in a lot of people's edits now like we've started adding um you know film texture overlays and 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 grain and that sort of stuff to our films and you see a lot of people now that they're you know they've started using clips provided from the couple of like their journey to be added Mm. into it and it's Mm. just becoming this whole like this ever-evolving base like i feel with Mm. photography um your style if can it evolve into a more of an editorial type style mm-hmm. and a bit more of a storytelling style, like a lot of the, um, going back to like the American photographers, like I think they just ace that. Um, yeah. But I feel like you can only go 
so far in the sense of like where you can take it, take it. Um, mm. Like you can take the photo and then you can print it. Mm. That's kind of it. Whereas with this, you can create spin-offs yeah. and you can put, you know, bits from here and here and here and here into it. And you can tell it in a completely different way that but I guess a store, a photo is able to. So it's interesting mm. to see how it's all going to turn yeah, out. That's how we differentiate from all, from, yeah, just how we differentiate our businesses, I think, through mm-hmm. video. Like you look at photographers, you look at enough photographers, everything starts looking pretty same, same. Mm-hmm. It's just like maybe they get a different shot of, you know, there's a bit more experience. They know how to do a little bit better. But video, mm-hmm. it's like how you edit a film to how we edit a yeah. film. Like we could have the same footage and the video edits could look completely different. Yeah, yeah so exactly. It's such a creative outlet. Um, and mm-hmm. you can change your style whenever you want. You know, you can adapt styles, whereas photography, there's only so many ways you can edit a photo mm. um, yeah. within a certain boundary, whereas like video, there's no boundaries. So yeah. like where do you yes. want to take it? As you can exactly. say, you can make it smooth, you can make it slow-mo the whole day, or otherwise you can make it a mm. quick edit, and they're very, very different. So um, there's definitely plenty of creativity in video, mm. that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, that's why we love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's by, and um, just spinning off from that, like how do you see your – videography business evolving over the next like the rest of this season and then into like years to come with obviously so much room for you know expansion and and styles and all that sort of stuff yeah we're um like we're i think we're like on that sort of path that we want to go now like even um like with the the way we're telling the stories and using more of these like little moments in between we're getting like we're finding more of these moments and we're trying to pull more of these moments out of the day and out of the couple on the day too. Like, um, and I think we're leaning more into those little in-between bits too, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. I guess goals, you want to be full-time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, yeah, I'll be going full-time um, by September, I reckon. Next yeah. season, yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's awesome. That's cool. Pretty, yeah, that's, um, that's a plan. Um, it's just... Crazy. Take yeah. on more weddings. Yeah. We want to do some overseas weddings. That'd be really mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sort of big things, yeah. I guess. Big goals. Yeah. Yeah. Just maybe enhance our processes a bit too. Like, like, um, just make them a bit like, uh, Straight like bring the quality. Yeah. Yeah. Like more efficient. Yeah. Like we're looking at getting, um, like the tentacle sync sort of system so that, um, like we can pull these moments out from couples and have like better audio and like do mm. it in a much quicker way so we're not like spending hours trying to sync up yeah. audio like oh, is it like the time coding recording yeah. Yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 we talked about that yeah, yeah. another we follow in the states who does <laughs> he's on steroids like seriously <laughs> he's got all his gears he creates like netflix documentaries type yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. incredible he's, he's yeah. nuts nuts it's like but that is just a whole another level. But the time code thing makes sense if you're doing the doco stuff. Whereas if you're doing mm. the shorter stuff, it's like, there's no point. But if you're doing longer doco stuff, then yeah, if you're, your editing time can get cut down by half because you already know mm-hmm. where everything is, everything matches up. Mm, so. Yeah. Yeah, like like I we're editing a film at the moment and like we had this moment with the couple when they were like, you know, on the stairs and like they were talking to each other so then I spent like 10 minutes like yeah. searching through the Tascam audio yeah. and like then syncing it up and yeah, yeah. like whereas, it, yeah, if you have this time code, it's just it. bang, it's done. Like I can Choice. like get that moment quickly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do, you, um, do you keep mics on your, um, like your groom when you go out for portrait sessions and stuff like that in case anything is captured or, you know, there's laughs yeah. and jokes and all those sorts of bits and pieces? Yeah, generally, yeah, unless they like ask for it off, but yeah. um, we'll probably like we'll when we then go out for portraits or sunsets, then we'll probably say, "Oh, can we just put this back on, like yeah. just for this this sort of time?" But yeah, generally we like have it on because yeah, you that's where we get those little bits. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, we can use them for the like to enhance the, the whatever. story. Yeah. So just a quick question around that: How do you manage all your media, so your storage and everything? Obviously, with there's so many things going on, you got four cameras, you got five sources of audio, batteries. How yeah. how does the whole process? Have you nailed it down to a good process, or is it still a juggling act to go? 
um, through the day. What's what's running out of battery? What's it running out of storage? How much? When do I switch cards? Do I have a wedding the next day? What's going on there? Yeah, we've got like enough cards for like back to back. So like if we um, yeah do have a back to back wedding, like we just take the cards out and put the next set in. Um, I'll always just when I when I get home just like upload all the um, all the footage and stuff. Um, we're just doing at the moment. We just got like you know two hard drives, like one's connected to the computer, one's off um, as like a backup. Mm. Um, and then we've also got like yeah your cloud storage, like your Dropbox, Dropbox. Unlimited. Um, and yeah, I think this season though we're probably going to look at like a NAS as well. Mm. Um, as like another source, just so we're not like, like currently like Cass edits on one computer and I edit on another. Cause we, we sort of share the process of editing. Like we used mm. to do, Cass would do one wedding, I'd do it, do the next. But now we've sort of like worked out that Cass has strengths in like storytelling and, um, and like putting the footage over the top and all that sort of stuff. And, like, I have a background in music, so, like, I do all the audio and, like, the music. Uh, um, yeah. and so, so, do, like, you, do you do one section of it, Cass, and then you just pass it on to yourself, Kane, and then you just yeah. like, kind of, like, tweak from yeah. it? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So I do the story, and then Kane gets it for music, and then he gives and it audio, back to yeah. me, and I do um, visuals, yep. and then pass it back to Kane. He basically tightens everything up, does any effects that we might yeah. need, any titles, um, any captions, and then I colour it all. Yeah. Cool. And that's like streamlined our process. Yeah. 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 So yeah if you edit it one, if one's editing one time and another one's editing another day and then like the edits, there will be some discrepancy there, I guess, in the consistency. Yeah. Things. Yeah. Yeah. I think like we had a pretty similar style, but this just like tightens everything up. Yeah. So everything is like, better. yeah, we found that it's just helped so much. And yeah, mm. yeah just the process is much cleaner now. Mm. Um, yeah. Focus on your strengths too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Love it. Love it. Cool. All right. Well, it's been an hour, so it's been a good one. <laughs> um, <laughs> it goes quick. Um, yeah, it was fun. <laughs> so where can people find you on social media, website? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Instagram CKCS Films. Check us out. <laughs> um, and yeah, website is CKCSFilms dot com. Yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah, we're on Facebook, YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, we get so many anyway. people watch our stuff on YouTube. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's that's sick. We we had a couple one time, and she's like, she went to look at one filmmaker, accidentally searched us instead. And oh. then called me and she's like, oh, I'm just inquiring about this and that, but I was trying to find someone else and I found you and now I want to book you instead. Nice. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so, it's amazing yeah. how they find us. We've, we've had TikToks just pumping at the moment. Yeah, yeah right. Especially yeah. because um, if you can advertise, I know advertising on there, no one in America or the UK can advertise to their TikTok. Um, um. So you can't advertise on TikTok over there. Because wow. I tried to do it the other day and it would only allow me to do Australia and all these other countries I don't even yeah. know the names of. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, like Australia is still the only advertising channel in TikTok wow. that you can target. So, wonder how long that'll um, keep up. I'm not sure how long it'll last, but yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm riding it out as much as I can. Yeah. yeah like, um, so no, no one in Australia is getting hit with any outside Australia ads, basically. Mm. Yeah, right. So... It's you basically got our target market ready to just fling things at because I'm not sure how long it's going to last, but uh, mm. yeah, get on it while you can. Yeah. yeah, well, I just saw a state in the US has banned TikTok, so mm. like completely. Yeah, yeah. yeah I saw right. it this morning. I was like, well, that's yeah, I extreme. Zealand, I think it's banned in New Zealand and a few other countries as well. Oh, so God. it's interesting. Yeah, It'll be interesting to see where it goes, but um, like it's still pretty big here. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think that's why you're just going to stay on top of the Instagram stuff because if that goes, everyone will just jump across. So. Yeah. Yeah. We, we find most couples find us on Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, uh, like on our lead form, like we found that it's complete, Instagram. Yeah. Now. 90% or 95% is Instagram now. So, mm. I mean, I guess it's the best place. It's like your, your website just 
shrunk condense Condense. yeah 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 yeah. it's easier people can go through like they might not want to necessarily if they're looking watch a full six to 12 minute video at the start but they might just want to see snippets 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 and then they can go all right i'm going to invest in that now because people's attention Mm -hmm. spans are like and they're talking video now it's all video like we we do offer photography but i feel Mm -hmm. a little bit bad for the good photographers out there because they're kind of getting swamped by all this video, the way everything's going video. And like, mm. it's like the good photographers are still getting their name out there, but not as, as well as they could have been a couple of years ago. So yeah, um, yeah. I guess the advantage is in our court who are doing video and it just really, yeah, puts a bit of stress on those photographers who might be struggling yeah. to get their, their work out there. So yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's gone that way. Yeah. A lot more photographers doing video too. Yeah. Yeah, or having to do reels of their, yeah. their mm-hmm. photos because that's the only way they can get their content out. So yeah, um, that love it. Thanks for jumping on, guys. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Thanks so much for Thank having a chat. Hope uh, I hope you guys got something out of it and had a good time. And I hope everybody yeah. listening uh, did the same. I'm sure they will. We went over some some good stuff there. So make yeah. sure if you're listening, go and check them out um, and book them for your wedding, especially if you're that adventurous, fun type. These guys seem like your perfect mix. So, um, yeah, thanks so much again, guys. And uh, hopefully, maybe we can get you back on in September and you've made the full-time switch and yeah, and we can discuss it all then. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, guys. Perfect. Thanks, thanks Kane. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. See you.